You see the cone here. The cone includes everything from Tallahassee, Florida east. The entire peninsula of Florida is in that cone of uncertainty. This is not saying everybody there will get everything, but the chances that the center of the storm, the eye of the storm, the 25 mile an hour eye of the storm that right now carries 175 mile an hour winds at surface level will pass somewhere in this cone. The likeliest point of impact is along this line. Again, this is from our station WSVN7 in Miami. Likeliest point of impact right along here. I want to show you what that means in the big picture. 5.9 million people live in Dade, Miami-Dade County, Broward County, and the Palm Beaches. That's the three counties here. So the cone goes everywhere. The cone goes everywhere from Tallahassee. You saw the cone there a little bit ago. And it includes all of the peninsula of Florida. Clear. Off. I want to bring this in a little bit so you can see the area of greatest concern. And I'm showing you this because this is as serious a storm in the 30 years that I've been doing this as anyone has ever covered. Part of it is it's so strong. The eye is so wide at 25 miles an hour. But more importantly, where they think it's going over this population center. This is Lake Okeechobee. This is Key Largo, Florida. Here's Miami and Hollywood and Fort Lauderdale, Boca Raton, Delray Beach, West Palm Beach, and Jupiter, and the Jupiter Inlet there that you've probably heard a lot about. I want to show you where this most likely track of this storm is. Now think, think of it. The distance from Naples to Fort Lauderdale is 100 miles across Alligator Alley, right in the middle of the Florida Everglades. So here to here is 100 miles. The storm contains hurricane force winds 50 miles out from the center. So 50 miles in all direction. Here's the likely track. This is the likely track, the most likely track of this storm. Now it could hit anywhere, but here's what's most likely. It comes in this way, it turns to the north, it comes in right about Key Largo, goes straight up through Miami-Dade and Broward and the West Palm Beaches and goes out somewhere along the Jupiter Inlet. That's the most likely track of this storm. And that is for South Florida absolutely the worst case scenario for a hurricane of this kind. Because this storm, that's the most likely track. It could hit anywhere, but that's most likely. This brings 175 mile an hour winds at the surface and 30 stories up in a, in a condominium tower in a hotel, they're more like 200 miles an hour. There's no hurricane rating for buildings at 200 miles an hour, not 30 stories up. This brings a storm surge of 10 to 15 feet, which would cover all of this, all of it. All of this would be 10 to 15 feet underwater, all of it. And that's the reason why in zones one and two right now in South Florida, which is right along the coast from Key Largo all, of, all in through here, one and two has a mandatory evacuation now. Because if, if it happens the way they believe it's going to happen, if it happens the way it's being discussed right now in WSVN in South Florida, this will decimate South Florida. You got to hope it makes a turn to the east if you're in Florida, makes a turn to the east because the dry side of the storm is on this side. You hope that's what happens. But the most likely track is here. And if that happens, all of this is underwater. The windows are out at the top of those massive buildings all over Miami, the third tallest city in America, all the tops of those buildings. All of this is flooded. And everywhere the eye crosses, if the hurricane winds remain as they are now, 175 miles an hour, central pressure 922 millibars, very strong, down from 914 last night, but still very strong the strongest storm of its kind to stay this strong for this length of time ever recorded, 185 miles an hour for 37 hours. That had never happened in the history of meteorology, not recorded in the United States or anywhere on Earth. So if this happens, this is devastated. And that's why everyone who's been told they have a mandatory evacuation order, if your governor or your mayor or your emergency managers have said you're in a mandatory evacuation order with this storm on this day at this time. You have to evacuate, Rick. You just, you have to, right? Uh, yeah, so uh, first of all, since the 60s, since we've had satellite, the satellite era, and I will tell you, generally the stronger 
Storms that we see like this are in the West Pacific. Those storms that hit the Philippines, uh, Taiwan, the, or uh, yeah, Taiwan. Those kinds of storms. This storm has looked a lot like that. And you're right, at 185 miles an hour, it's the longest duration of that that we've ever seen in the satellite era. So the longest we've ever seen a Cat three, a Cat five, is three days, and we're at uh, almost two days right now. So, and I think there's a good chance we're gonna. We're going to see that. I tell you, the Turks and Caicos in the short term are about to get pummeled from this storm with a Cat 5. Probably a 15 to 20 foot storm surge going over those islands. A lot of those islands are not that tall. That means a lot of those islands getting a complete washover. Uh, in the short term, say the next two days, it continues to pull off towards the west northwest before it makes that right hand jog. I will tell you this also the waters are really warm. Hurricane warnings here everywhere in the south. We have about 16 million people here. We had a Cat 4 make landfall with Harvey. Obviously, all of the oxygen got sucked up from that storm because of the flooding in the Houston area. But the Cat 4 part of that storm didn't get a ton of attention because of that Houston part. That Cat 4 came on shore where there was not a lot of people. What it did do to the people there was decimate that area, but it didn't have a lot of population there. This is a completely different scenario with that. Also, Shep, with the water that this storm has gone over so far has been warm, but not crazy warm. Take a look. We normally don't put, just put the center of the track on, but I'm doing this here so you can see. This water right here is baking. It's almost 90 degrees, so it's going to continue to go over a lot of warm water before it gets towards Florida. So there's no reason to think that it's going to weaken to anything below a major a storm. And also, we don't like to put the exact center of it, but I've been talking for a couple of days here about that center of the storm. And we can't tell you within 20 or 30 miles one direction which way this is going to go. Our models are still showing that hard right turn. They're still showing most of them in this area, this eastern side of Florida, but a few of them still go a little bit farther towards the west. But if you pick that center point, from the National Hurricane Center. Take a look at this. The worst side is the right side. This is the current forecast just to the east of Miami. So you'd get certainly a lot of storm surge into Miami in that South Beach area, but maybe the worst of it is up here between there and say West Palm. Uh, if it goes a little bit offshore, it never loses its moisture source and it's a much worse scenario for Georgia or South Carolina, whichever area it gets. But Fluctuations in here are going to happen. Uh, we probably won't know really until we see that turn happen on Saturday exactly where this is going to go. That means all of these 16 million people here need to make their plans to get out.